Oh, hey guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, a lot of you might be wondering what I'm doing here, uh, well, at least in this capacity. You've probably seen my drumming videos before, but I thought I'd do a video about something else I'm passionate about, which happens to be drones and drone things. The primary purpose of this video um, is just to talk about uh, getting your commercial drone license, which I did about a month ago. Uh, officially, it's called your FAA Part 107 SUAS certification, which is Small Unmanned Aircraft Systems. And um, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty lengthy process to get it. I mean, I'm not going to say it's super hard to get it, but at the same time, you definitely need to put in some hours to study for the exam. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about what I did. So first of all, the very first thing that I recommend any of you guys do before you start studying for this exam is go on YouTube and type in FAA Part 107, test, you know, study guide, whatever. And um, you're gonna see a video pop up from Tony and Chelsea Northrup. And uh, it's a two hour video, but trust me, it's worth it to watch it. Uh, the first, this is the very first thing, you need to watch this video. Because if you don't watch this video, First, you're probably going to be scared out of taking the exam. The video is just uh, very comprehensive. It goes over. Tony does a great job talking about all the you know little subsections that are on the exam, and uh, this is just a good first introduction to a lot of the material that you will be learning. The second thing that I would recommend doing is go to the FAA's website, and they have an official an official study guide for the test. It's about 80 pages long, but uh, to be honest, it's not, it's not that bad. The, the only thing that's bad in it is the, the weather section. So if you're going to gloss over one section in the entire thing, I would gloss over the weather section. Also, it's one of those government you know, documents, so there's pages that are intentionally left blank, which I don't understand why they are left blank, but you know, it's the government, so they can do what they want. So after you've read through the official FAA study guide, I would then recommend heading on over to 3dr.com where they have a free practice test. Now this practice test um, is 130 questions and your official test that you're gonna take is only 60 questions. So if you can get through this practice test with I would say about an 80% or above, you should do just fine on the official test. I was scoring in the 90s on these sections here on the practice test, and I actually got a 90 on my um, test. So I would say it's, it's very accurate, and uh, it's a very useful resource. Now, after you've watched Tony and Chelsea Northrup's video, you've read through the FAA study guide, you've taken your 130 question practice test on 3dr.com, I would then go back and watch the uh, Tony and Chelsea Northrop video one more time. Um, it'll just, it'll help to sort of solidify a lot of the information and um, it'll just really help out right before you take the test. And another thing too, when you are on uh, the Tony and Chelsea Northrop video, uh, just sort of open up the, in the info section right there and they will have a link to their study guide, which actually, it sort of condenses a lot of the like little minuscule facts that you have to learn, you know, like, how high can you fly your aircraft? How old do you have to be to register it? You know, stuff like that. So instead of having to dig through the FAA study guide, it's just nice to have that sort of condense into a little cheat sheet. Now, what should you not study? Well, the, you should study everything, but uh, maybe, maybe not actually. Um, from what I found, the, the highest yield material to study is definitely sectional charts. My 60 question test was, I want to say about two thirds sectional charts. So be sure you're just very familiar with reading those and being able to interpret all the information on there. In terms of uh, the lowest yielding material, I would actually say it's the weather section. On my particular test, I had hardly any questions about weather, maybe maybe three or four questions about weather. And um, I believe that's actually the longest section in the FAA study guide. So it's kind of, uh, I don't really see why they're concerned with that. As far as uh, learning how to read METAR reports and stuff, 
yeah, definitely you have to know how to do that. Um, don't focus all your time there. I had a couple questions on it, um, but it was just sort of the, the basic stuff. There's a lot of like short little like three letter codes and stuff for different weather things. Don't, don't bother memorizing those. They're gonna be easy questions, but you definitely need to know how to extract information out of the METAR reports. Now, I did not actually think the test was that difficult. Um, I, like I said, I scored a 90. Um, I spent probably 10 hours in total studying for it, um, but it was not that difficult. I would have scored even higher, but there was legitimately a couple questions where either I didn't know what they were asking or I couldn't find the location on the map they'd given me. But uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a little bit weird when you're going in to take the test. I mean, they, they make you show identification. Uh, you have to like take all of, your, all of your belongings that are in your pockets and stuff and you put it in a bag and then they lock the bag and they give it with you so you can't take it out. Um, but it's, act, it's not too bad. I mean, it's just like any other standardized test. Probably the most frustrating thing out of this whole process for me was actually signing up to take the test. My local airport does not administer the test, so I had to drive south 40 minutes to take it. But um, I, I called around some other airports, and uh, one of them, they did administer the test, but their machines were down, I guess. The computers were down, so they couldn't do it. Um, another one that I called, the one I ended up taking it at, they only administered the test like two days a week. Um, so I actually had to wait, end up waiting about two weeks to take it, which was very frustrating because I'd already studied for it and I didn't really want to wait longer. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, my drone too. Uh, this is a Phantom 4 Pro. Uh, I recently acquired this. I had the 4 to start out with and felt the need to upgrade <laughs> already, but I love this thing. The Sony sensor in it is just great. Um, and it flies, it's so easy to fly, it's amazing. Uh, and once you pass your test, which you will if you use all the resources, um, you're gonna do some forms online and stuff, and then you're gonna get a piece of paper like this, which basically says that you passed the test and you carry it around. This is the soft copy, they're supposed to, the FAA is supposed to issue you a hard copy of it, which is like a driver's license. But they haven't given me mine yet, come to think about it. So FAA, if you're watching this video, you owe me a hard copy of my license because I passed my test. So yeah, if you could send that to me, that'd be great, thanks. But yeah, whenever you're doing commercial work, you have to carry around the soft copy or the hard copy of your license. So the people who are hiring you can know that you are legally doing drone footage. So it's kind of annoying that you have to pay to take the test to legally fly, but um, it's only $150. If you are flying without a license, uh, without I mean without the certification, then I believe the FAA can fine you up to $1,000. And businesses, if you're watching this, you need to hire licensed people like me because if you hire someone who's not licensed, the FAA can fine you guys up to $10,000. Well, I think that about concludes my uh, little video here. I will be posting a lot more drone stuff in the future with this guy. Um, yeah, it's just a very uh, exciting new world of uh, cinema cinematography that we live in where you get to you know, capture these aerial images that used to be insanely hard to get. Now you can just go out and buy yourself a DJI Phantom 4 Pro and capture the same sort of images. You guys be safe, be responsible, be careful, follow the rules, get your license. Um, if you guys don't follow the rules, the FAA is just gonna come down harder on everyone and the drone laws are gonna get even worse. They're bad now because there are a couple bad apples had to ruin the whole, you know, batch of apples. <laughs> So follow the rules and, and yeah, follow the rules. Don't be bad. Okay, bye.